You were one of the lawyers who represented the Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein in advance of a sexual assault trial. For this, Harvard forced you to step down as faculty deans, uh, you and your wife, of Winthrop House. Can you tell the story of this saga from uh, first deciding to represent Harvey Weinstein to the interesting, complicated events that followed? Yeah, sure. So I got a call one morning from a colleague at the Harvard Law School who uh, asked if uh, I would consent to taking a call from from Harvey. Uh, he wanted to meet me and uh, and chat with me about representing him. I said yes, and um, one thing led to another. Uh, I uh, drove out to Connecticut uh, where he was staying and met with him and some of his advisors. And then uh, like a day or two later, I uh, decided to, to take the case. This would have been back in uh, January of 2019, uh, I, I believe. So the sort of cases, I, I have a very small practice. Most of my time is, is teaching and, and, and writing. Uh, but uh, I tend to take cases that most uh, deem to be uh, impossible. Uh, uh, I take the challenging sorts of cases. And and this was um, uh, fit the bill. It was quite challenging in the sense that uh, everyone had uh, prejudged the case. When I say everyone, I just mean the, the general sentiment in the public uh, uh, had the case prejudged, uh, even though the specific allegations did not regard uh, the any of the people in the um, in the New Yorker, that's the New Yorker article that sort of uh, uh, exposed uh, everything that was going on uh, allegedly with, with with Harvey. So I decided to uh, to take the case, and uh, I did. Is there a philosophy behind you taking on these very difficult cases? Like, is it a set of principles? Is it just your love of the law, or is it of is there like set of principles why you take on the cases? Yeah, I, I do. I take on. I like to take on hard cases, and I like to take on the cases that uh, that uh, are with unpopular uh, defendants, unpopular clients. Um, and with respect to the latter, that's where Harvey Weinstein yeah. fell. Yes, uh, it's because uh, we need lawyers and good lawyers to take the unpopular cases, uh, because that those sorts of cases determine what sort of criminal justice system we have. Uh, if we don't protect the rights and the liberties of those whom the society deems to be the least and the last, the unpopular client, then that's the, the camel's nose under the tent. If we let the camel's nose under the tent, the entire tent is going to collapse. That is to say, if we short circuit the rights of a client like Harvey Weinstein, then the next thing you know, someone will be at your door knocking it down and violating your rights. There's a there's a certain creep there with respect to um, the way in which the, the state will respect the civil rights and civil liberties of people. And, and these are the sorts of cases that that, that test it. So, you know, for example, uh, there's a there, there was a young man many, many years ago named Ernesto Miranda. Um, by all accounts, he was not a likable guy. He was, a, you know, three time uh, knife thief and not a likable guy. But lawyers stepped up and took his case. And because of that, we now have the Miranda uh, warnings. You have the right to remain silent. That those those warnings that um, officers are, are are forced to give to people. Mm -hmm. So it is through these cases that we experience express oftentimes the best values in our criminal justice system. So I, I, I proudly take on these sorts of cases in order to vindicate not only the individual rights of the person whom I'm representing, but the rights of citizens uh, writ large, uh, who um, most of whom do not experience the criminal justice system. And it's partly because of lawyers who take on these sorts of cases and establish rules that protect us, uh, average, everyday, ordinary, concrete citizens. As From a psychological perspective, just you as a human, is there, is there fear? Is there stress from all the pressure? Because if you're facing, I mean, the whole point, a difficult case, especially in the latter that you mentioned of the going against popular opinion, mm -hmm. you have the eyes of millions potentially looking at you with anger. 
uh, as you try to defend, uh, you know, this these set of laws that this country is built on. No, it doesn't stress me out particularly. <laughs> it, okay. uh, you know, it, it sort of comes with the the territory. I try not to get uh, too excited in either direction. So a big part of my practice is uh, wrongful convictions, and I. Uh, I've gotten uh, over 6,000 people out of prison who've been wrongfully incarcerated, and a subset of those people have been convicted. And, you know, if people have been in jail 20, 30 uh, years who have gotten out, and those are the sorts of cases where people uh, praise you and, and, and that sort of thing. And so, look, I, I, I do uh, the work that I do. I'm proud of the work that I do. And in that sense, I'm— uh, Sort of a part-time Taoist. You know, the, the expression "reversal" is the movement yeah. of the Tao. Yeah. Uh, so I don't get too high. I don't get too low. Uh, I just try to do my work and, and represent people to the best of my ability.